It's Friday, April 27, and this is your Barbados Today Afternoon News. I am Mary Claire Williams. Thank you for joining us. Candidates taking CXC exams on May 24th, Election Day in Barbados, will not be disadvantaged. That's the assurance from the Ministry of Education on the heels of concerns raised by the Barbados Labour Party's leader, Mia Motley, about a possible negative impact on students. On election day, students will sit CSEC exams in geography, agricultural science and industrial technology. The ministry says all arrangements are in place for the administration of the exams, which will be conducted in strict compliance with the regulations and procedures of respective examining bodies. It has advised all candidates to report early to their examination centers as outlined in their timetable. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Chris Sinclair has dismissed the issue as much ado about nothing. Well, I don't think the, um, this, is, this process is really about Ms. Motley and what Ms. Motley wants and what she doesn't want. Um, the Prime Minister has called the election as he um, had indicated that he would. It should be well within the time uh, stipulated as the deadline for calling elections. And we all knew this was coming. It is not the first time that elections have been called in Barbados around an examination period. I remember in 1986, for example, elections were held 28th of May, and I was at Community College, I believe, at the time, and we had exams. It didn't disrupt us, and there were CXC exams going on as well, the May-June examinations. So, you know, um, the Ministry of Education, um, they're very, very well um, trained and schooled and uh, uh, experienced in these matters. They will work with CXC. CXC is actually headquartered in Barbados. So I'm sure they will work with CXC to make the appropriate arrangements for the exams. The opposition Barbados Labour Party this morning pledged to run a clean campaign leading up to the general election on May 24. General Secretary and Campaign Manager Dr. Jerome Walcott told a press conference at the party's headquarters on Roebuck Street that they have no intention of adopting the trivial approach of the, of the incumbent Democratic Labour Party. Walcott said the BLP intends to steer clear of nastiness and focus on issues which matter to Barbadians. He said the economy is issue number one on the campaign trail. Flanked by Chairman of BLP's Marketing and Communications Committee, Noel Lynch, Walcott also told reporters the party will launch its campaign on May 5th and its manifesto following the following week. Beginning with the removal of the crippling NSRL, the policies of the Barbados Labour Party will facilitate economic growth. Sustained economic growth means more opportunities, opportunities for more jobs and a better life overall for our citizens. This is the mission of the Barbados Labour Party. In other news this Friday, wanted man Leros Leon Dre Burnett, who took to social media earlier this month claiming that he was wrongfully accused, has been captured. The 29-year-old, who was being sought in connection with a serious criminal matter, was arrested after a confrontation with lawmen last night. Acting on a tip-off, police went to First Avenue Homestead Drive Fair Pilgrim Christchurch around 9 p.m. Upon arrival, they saw a dreadlocked man crouching behind a van which was parked inside the garage of a house. Burnett was also seen hiding on the ground between the vehicle and the garage wall. Police approached both men and Burnett immediately tried to escape. However, he was restrained by police after a violent struggle in which two officers were injured. Burnett also suffered injuries and was taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Meanwhile, the dreadlocked man managed to escape on foot and police have, however, seized the vehicle. They are appealing to anyone with information on the whereabouts of the dreadlocked man to contact the District B police station at telephone number 437-4311 or the police emergency number 211, Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477 or the nearest police station. A warning that the Barbados economy could be wiped out if disaster strikes. Chief Executive Officer of Lynch Insurance Brokers, Gregory Roach, told a disaster risk reduction seminar on Thursday that too many businesses are not ready for any eventuality. The hurricanes of last year, Irma and Maria, that severely impacted our region should not be our wake-up call. 
Our wake-up call should have occurred decades ago. We in Barbados are still playing catch-up. Too many businesses have no disaster response or continuity plan. Only 11% of businesses in Barbados are buying business interruption insurance. We saw with the recent hurricanes, your business will be down for extended period, periods. You'll be waiting for the adjusters. You'll be waiting for contractors, trying to communicate, trying to pay staff, and trying to access capital to expedite your recovery. With no cohesive plan of action and no insurance protection for your income, you will not have a viable business by the time your property settlement comes around. At the same time, the Vice President of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Ezra Prescott, urged businesses not to take preparations for the upcoming hurricane season lightly. He warned that in the current climate, businesses are especially at risk. Considering, consider how do you recover? Because come the following year, if you can still keep your business running, not on wood, you have to figure out in a further reduced market space, how to be more efficient, how to take things and make things better, given you have a reduced customer spend coming in, but increased working capital demand. Your, your things that you don't think about, your depreciation, your non-financial charges, how do you manage that against a challenge event to begin with? And the reality as business people, from the Chamber of Commerce's standpoint, is that we already have a very hard time ahead of us, given everything else that all of you know we're facing. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital will resume all surgeries starting next Monday. On Tuesday, management announced that the surgical department was only able to perform emergency procedures due to a shortage of critical drugs needed for patients before and after surgery. In a statement this morning, the QEH said it had partnered with the Barbados Drug Service to secure the drugs from an alternative suppliers in the United States. The QEH's CEO, Dr. Dexter James, said, however, that given the demand for these and other drugs, the hospital will have to seek additional funds from the Ministry of Finance to accumulate supplies for another three months to avoid any disruptions in the hospital's operations. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, is unhappy with how humanitarian organizations have described the repatriation of 82 Venezuelan nationals, and he is planning to write an official complaint to the United Nations. During a news conference, Dr. Rowley said the negative press does not reflect this country's approach to dealing with Venezuelan immigration, and he made it clear that he will not allow the UN to convert this country into a refugee camp. Those criticisms are not supported by the facts. The United Nations, Amnesty International, and other human rights groups have condemned this country's decision to return 82 Venezuelan nationals to their home country. But the remarks are not sitting well with Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, who believes they were ill-informed. We will not allow, without protest, public servants from any international agency to misrepresent our circumstance to the world and stay in Trinidad and Tobago. Against that background, I, as Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, will, under my hand, write a complaint to the United Nations at its headquarters about the conduct of persons who take it upon themselves to speak about Trinidad and Tobago. At Thursday's post-cabinet news conference, Dr. Rowley lamented that this country was being accused of acting in an unbecoming manner when it has repeatedly demonstrated its generosity to Venezuelans. 
Dr. Rowley says there are provisions in place that allow them a short-term stay in this country to purchase goods. But he says the Nationals at the Immigration Detention Center were there for a reason. On the international scene, at least seven students have been stabbed to death and 12 injured in a knife attack outside a school in northern China. The knife-wielding man attacked the students as they were heading home for the day. Officials say the suspect is a 29-year-old, is a 28-year-old former student of the school. Preliminary investigations have revealed that he was motivated to take revenge because he was bullied in his third year at the school. And that's news this afternoon, but for the very latest, you can visit our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good afternoon.